What's up everybody, thanks for tuning back in to my YouTube channel. This week, or today, I don't know, maybe later this week or the rest of this week or sometime today, I don't, I don't really know when this is going to be done. But we are starting to do my Winters Quick Change Differential Subframe. It's a mouthful. But we have to take the stock subframe for my E92, which is sitting right next to me here, and cut like a bunch of shit out of it and make my winters fit into it and weld like plates and design things on the computer and take some bushings out and replace them. We gotta do all this stuff to the rear subframe to fit the winters quick change that I had in my E36. So today we're gonna take this right here. This is the subframe out of my E92. Actually, it's a second subframe that I have. There's actually another one in it. It's kind of stuffed in the corner over here. But we're gonna take this subframe and we're gonna make something like this out of it. This is the quick change subframe out of my E36. And this one's from Siki. But you can see like a lot of stuff is cut out of it. And it has these like brackets welded in to bolt in the winter's quick change differential. And we're gonna to try to make one ourselves out of this subframe. I'm very lucky because I have two E92 subframes. So I can uh, experiment with this one and if it doesn't work out, then I'll have to buy one. So the first thing we have to do to start this whole winter's quick change subframe conversion is we have to make a jig because we're going to cut many structural parts out of the subframe itself. So we're going to cut like the whole middle out of it basically. We have to make a jig to ensure that it doesn't bend or move when we make these cuts. And to make a jig that's worth anything, we have to put solid aluminum bushings in it first so that there's not so much play in the bolt when it's bolted onto the jig so it can't move basically at all. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to melt all the subframe bushings out of my E92 subframe to press in some solid aluminum bushings. I've also got a bunch of Wisefab bushings from my, my rear Wisefab kit that I have to press in so I'll probably take those out as well. Maybe we'll shave some differential mounts or things we're not using off of the E92 subframe. And if all goes well in this video, I will weld up the jig as well. I've already cut all the metal for the jig. And actually I know exactly how it's gonna go already, but I haven't welded it together because I didn't have the subframes, but I was able to pick some up on Black Friday for a great price. And that means we can start doing this project, which I think is gonna be a big project. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take out these rear subframe bushings. They're just this like really dense rubber. I'm gonna do the tried and true method of lighting them on fire and waiting until they're soft enough to hit them out with a hammer. There's probably better ways to do it, but I've, uh, from my experience, this is a pretty, pretty easy way to do it too. It should take like 15, 20 minutes. But uh, I'm gonna hammer those out. I'm gonna figure out if I can get the um, rest of the suspension bushings out the same way. I think they have metal collars, so I might have to do a bit more work with those but I'm gonna to try to punch those out as well. Press the aluminum bushings in, and then start making the jig for it.
All right, guys, so we got all of the stock bushings out. I used the fire trick with a hammer. I brought the subframe over to Night Owl. I used an air hammer for some of them. They were a real pain to get out, but it is possible with just fire and a hammer. It was just too much effort. So I went over to Night Owl and used the air hammer to knock the back two out. Um, then I went to AutoZone and borrowed like the ball joint C-clamp press tool thing. And uh, that took all the control arm mounts out. And I needed to do that because the WiseFab kit actually came with uh, spherical mounts for the control arm. So those need to be pressed into the subframe as well. If we look at the subframe here, I got a bunch of stuff on the floor. But if we look at the subframe, these are from RevShift, they're FD spec, so I got these ones. They're pressed in pretty nicely actually. Um, I mean, they're aluminum mounts, there's nothing too special about them. But I got those in and uh, oh. You can see I only did the bottom ones. And the reason I did that was because I'm going to make a jig and it's going to come up through here to bolt these two. But I want to be able to knock them out after I do all the welding to the subframe because I want to paint the subframe. So knock these out, you know, not paint in here, tape this off or something. But paint the whole thing and press these back in. And then I'll press the top ones in as well. So now we got to make the jig to keep the subframe all in the same place after we cut like big hunks of metal out of it. And it just keeps it so it'll mount back up to the car after, whether we weld it or we cut anything. It could shr shrink or deform or expand, and we don't want any of that to happen. So I'm making a jig to keep it the way it is when I take big chunks of metal out of it. And you guys can see I cheated like I normally do. I pre-cut all the metal for it. I have everything kind of bolted in. I just made a little spacer here. I'm going to tack everything together. Actually, I gotta clean it all off first, tighten these down, figure out where everything's gonna be, tack it all together, and then we'll be ready to make some cuts out of this thing. We got a jig all made and uh, actually it looks pretty good. The subframe when sitting on the jig is level. There's a lot of room below the subframe and obviously above, there's nothing above it. But uh, I think there's plenty of room to actually slide the quick change differential in between there after we cut some things out and be able to mock it up or move it or set it to where we want it to be within the subframe space. So I think we're good to go on that front. Um, we're gonna make some extra bars to figure out where the subframe is going to be and stuff after we start cutting things out of this and uh, this is actually a um, pretty good step forward. Here, check it out. Pretty simple, it's just a square of 2x2 two two, and all it's really going to do is hold the subframe in place when I cut things out of it so it doesn't have to be fancy or nice. But what's going to be nice about this is that 
After I make this one, I'll still have the jig. And I have another subframe currently in the car. And actually, you can pick up these subframes relatively cheaply. So I may start selling these on the website if these uh, come out good, which I expect they will. I guess while I'm out here, I'll start uh, cutting off the old differential mounts. I'm out here, I got the angle grinder out, I might as well go ahead and do it, right? Alright guys, that's going to close it up for this episode. Uh, we got the subframe all broken down. We got the solid mounts in there, half of them. And we got the jig built. In the near future, there'll be another episode of me actually fitting the quick change into the subframe. Um, we still have to draw some things out in CAD and cut them out with the plasma and figure out where the subframe or where the quick change is going to go within the subframe and how much of the subframe we actually have to cut out. So I'm going to do some research figure out what I need to make, figure out how to get it in there, and then we'll be putting it in a future episode. So look forward to that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Comment if you have some advice for me, especially. I've never done this before, so I'm interested in any advice you can give me. And uh, thanks for watching.